Hi, I'm Jonathan Knight, and it's B-Movie Madness. The movie I'm going to review tonight, well, you already probably read the title, but I'm going to get the old trash can anyways. Let's see what I have here. Right, what I got here is the very new, re newly released Victor Crawley, the fourth in the Hatchet series. Now, before I get into the review, let me just tell you what it's about first. Now, Victor Crawley... It takes place 10 years after the events of Hatchet 3, and it's about the lone survivor, Andrew Young, who um, has just written a book um, for, the, for the 10th anniversary of the Swamp Murders, and he's going around talk shows and talking about the book. And of course, some people think he, he's a liar, and he actually murdered the people. Um, eventually, his agent convinced him to go back to the swamp to do an interview, and on the way there, the plane crashes in the swamp. Meanwhile, there's some horror filmmakers who are out the swamp wanting to make a um for, for um the hatchet murders, and eventually they bring Victor Crowley back to life, and now it's them and the people in the um crashed plane in the swamp having to face off, you know, a supernatural serial killer with Hatchet. Now, I'm a huge, huge fan of the first Hatchet movie. Um, it was one of those movies that was made for people like me who grew up, you know, watching 80 slasher movies. It was made by a huge 80 slasher film fan, and it was just everything I wanted to be more. Great kills, great killer, fun characters. Um, a couple years later, they did a sequel, Hatchet 2, which I was originally disappointed. It was much bigger in scope to the first two because it was meant to be the finale to the trilogy excuse me to the trilogy of films and so you know it's filmed in a wider wide screen it had a lot of stunt and wire work little explosions it was much, very more act in the first two movies and it truly did feel like a finale to the series i was actually not expecting a fourth hatchet movie mainly because um part three was the perfect finale in my opinion but on the and here's the funny thing on the 10th anniversary of the first Hatchet movie, um, Adam Green was going to screen the first movie, but he surprised people saying not only did he film a new Hatchet movie in secret, they're going to be able to watch it that night. People flipped the hell out when they learned this, and that was in August. Now it's February, um, and the movie's now on Blu-ray and DVDs for you know people who don't live near big cities where they do they show films like Victor Crowley, so people like me and the normal horror fan get to watch it now my expectations for this movie were a little higher than they should because um like i said number three was much bigger in scope to the first two movie and this movie feels more in line with the first two movies much smaller in scope well not small small in scope but smaller than three so i expected this movie to be as big as three and, and that's my own fault for having those expectations this movie is more like i said with the first two movies and how big it is and at first I was disappointed. I've watched this movie three times now. Two times without the commentary, one time with one of the commentaries. There's two commentary tracks on the uh, Blu-ray DVD. Um, I've watched it three times now when I was able to, you know, figure out what my feelings about the movie truly were. Because when I first watched it, I put it as my least favorite of the series. Part 2 is considered by most fans to be the weakest of the three movies. There's some people who don't like Part 3 either, but Part 2 is... Pretty much considered the weakest. And I put this at the bottom of my list, even though I did enjoy it still. But after watching it a third time, listening to the commentary, I've really grown just very quickly because I just watched it to appreciate it more. Um, for, you know, some little things and some big things. Um, before I get into, like, you know, some of the things I didn't like, the thing that I really liked about the movie is I liked it. And some people I've seen reviews don't like this part of the movie, but I really liked it is I like the fact that a plane crashes into the swamp. These people are already in a plane crash, and now they have to deal with a supernatural serial killer outside of the plane. Not only do they not want to stay in the plane because the plane's in the swamp and it's sinking into the water, but they can't really go outside because Victor Crowley's out there and he's going to hack them to pieces with a hatchet. And I really like that. You know, Some people didn't like them being stuck in the plane. I, I kind of dig that. It goes back from like the original Saw movie where people are stuck in the bathroom and they can't get out. I really like that. Um, the, the thing I like the most about the movie, surprisingly, is not Victor Crowley himself or the kills, although I love both of those things. It really took me by surprise is Adam Green sets up two particular characters to be one way, 
and then he kind of flips them on their head. Um, and one in particular is who you think the female lead's going to be. Because um, in the first three, it was Mary Beth, played by Daniel Harris in two and three, and someone else in part one. I can't remember their name. Um, you think this um, the uh, horror, the, this, the female character director in the movie who's trying to make the hatchet movie, or hatchet murder movie, you think she's going to be the female lead. And her best friend, who is the sluttier girl, sarcastic, you know, she's the character you expect to probably be killed off. One of the first people to be killed off. She ultimately becomes the female lead in the movie, the hero in the movie, where she, you know, has to, she takes charge and has to, you know, do things herself a little bit. And I really liked how he took that, like, we're thinking, oh, this girl's going to be dead probably within, like, the next ten minutes. And he makes her the female lead. Not only that, she's great. Now, she's played by Laura Ortiz, who was in Adam Green's TV show, Holliston. Uh, one of the best characters on that show. Um, and she's great here. I really liked her. Um, and there's another character called Dylan, who's played by Dave Sheridan, Sheridan, who played Officer Doofy in Scary Movie. That's what people most likely know him as. His character is a tour guide slash amateur actor who is an idiot. And he's the comic relief. He's an idiot, and he's the comic relief. And he ends up becoming pretty much he, um, the hero of the movie. And he makes the ultimate sacrifice. I'm not going to tell you exactly how... But, you know, he was the person that I was like, yeah, he's really funny. He's probably going to be one of the first people killed along with the... We're set up with Andrew Young, the survivor of the third Hatchet movie, to be the hero. Um, but he's very much a coward, and he's only agreeing to go to the swamp because his agent promised him a million dollars, and he's very scared, and you can't really blame him for being scared after what he went through in Hatchet 3. Um, but that's what I really liked about the movie. I like how they took those two characters, and they're like, these are these type of characters, and those type of characters are usually the ones that killed off very quickly in the movie, and they end up becoming the leads, basically. Um, and they went against my expectations, which I really appreciate, especially in a movie, a slasher movie like this, where, you know, you, the most important things is kills, which the kills are pretty much an important part of the movie. But the thing that surprised me the most is how much I like those characters. And there's other characters in the movie that I thought were, you know, ones that were meant to be unlikable were unlikable. Ones that were funny were funny. Um, Tiffany Shepis, who is a scream queen, you'll probably know her from a whole bunch of movies. Her character took me by surprise, too, because... I know Tiffany Shepis' work. I, you know, watched a lot of her movies, so I expect her to be the story exactly who she is, but um, I used to. Now, uh, Victor Crawley, um, you know, Kane Hodder is fantastic. I love Kane Hodder, and he, you could tell he loves, loves this role. He loves, he has so much passion for this role, and it's so great. And, you know, you know, throughout the four movies, his makeup has changed, design has slightly changed. I think in this one and the third movie, he looked the best. I think the makeup was perfect on him. The first movie it was a little bit too rubbery. The second movie was a little bit too plastic looking. This one, they really, I mean, he doesn't look terrible in the first two movies, but he definitely looks his best in the third and now this movie. Um, now for the kills. Um, I have to say, of all the four movies, this one probably has what I consider the weakest set of kills. Now, I'm not saying they're bad. They're far from bad. They're very gore. They're so... Uh, but there's a couple of kills where I thought they just could have been either, you know, better executed, maybe, or done something different altogether. Um, I'm not... Like I said, they're not bad, but, I, you know, this is the fourth half... kills in the movie it's certain kind of kills which but there's a point where i'm like well i wish they would have done something a little different um there's one kill in particular of one of the unlikable characters where i thought the kill was kind of underwhelming but there's some really good kills there's one kill in particular that i don't want to spoil who it, it's done to and it's exactly what the kill is but it involves a severed arm holding a cell phone and it is uh, one of the best kills of the hatchet series it's so damn good um and it's just really well done. The movie shot really well. The score is great. Um, the acting is good from all around. Um, Brian Quinn from Impractical Jokers has a, a pretty big role in the movie, and he's great. Um, you also have, um, I'm trying to think, Jonah Ray, the new host of uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000, the Netflix revival. 
He has a cameo in the beginning. The opening scene, I'll mention this quickly, the opening scene is, takes place in 1964, and he, well, you can pretty much guess what happens to him and his girlfriend. Um, that sequence is great. That It opens up with a bloody bang, so, you know, if you're wanting some really gory stuff right at the beginning, you're going to get it. Um, he's great. There's, you know, Tiffany Sheffis, like I said. Um, Tyler Maine, who plays Michael Myers in the Rob Zombie Halloweens. He has a cameo in the movie, which is pretty cool. There's, there's a bunch of people in the movie. Like I said, Dave Sheridan and Laura Ortiz are both fantastic. They made the movie for me. Um, Perry in all four, four Hatchet movies, but this is the only time he played a character not only that survived, but returned for another movie. And he's really good, too. He's always good. I thought he was really funny in the first movie. Um, like I said, everyone's good. His shot was shot really well, very well edited, very well directed. I do think the best directed one, in my personal opinion, is the third movie. And that was directed by Adam Green. It was directed by B.J. McDonnell, who was a camera operator, I believe, on the first two movies. Maybe just the second movie, I can't remember. But I thought he did great, especially as a first-time director. The movie is real well executed. And I don't, I don't think Adam Green's... This movie is as well directed as three, but again... I'm a huge fan of 3, so this movie had a lot to live up to, but I still think despite some of the shortcomings, such as the kills and the fact that it just felt, you know, much smaller than the third movie, that it, it was just a really fun time, and I'm really grateful that Adam Green is not only still making these movies, because he talks about on the Blu-ray that the 3 was supposed to be finale, and he had no interest in doing more, and it was a discussion with George Romero, who asked him, when are you going to make another Crawley movie? You should make another Victor Crawley movie, another Hatchet movie. That convinced him to, you know, go out and make another Hatchet movie. Not only not, because he's like, he said, there's too much hype these days where you get like a thousand trailers, posters, and by the time the movie comes out, I'm sick of it. Or, you know, it's so hyped up that, you know, the movie's not going to meet those unrealistic expectations. With Victor Crawley, it came out suddenly out of nowhere where I really didn't have really an expectation until it came to the time when it was coming out on Blu-ray and DVD. There's no way I saw it theatrically. The movie didn't meet those expectations simply because, you know, I was expecting it to because I had Hydra 3, but I shouldn't have went in and did that. And I'm really grateful. I am truly grateful that Adam Green is not only still making these movies, that these movies still exist. There is no big screen slasher movies. The next one I can think of is going to be the Halloween reboot in October. And, you know, this is the only chance to see movies like this. Sadly, we can't see them theatrically worldwide because simply there's no money in it. You know, Horror movies these days are pretty much supernatural thrillers, which, you know, I can give or take them. Um, and I have nothing against certain horror movies and theaters. And, you know, my favorite horror movie last year was It. I absolutely loved It. And I'm glad it came out. I'm glad it made a shit ton of money. But I would like to see more like this stuff in theaters. But at the same time, if I can't, I'm still grateful they're being made. Um, I would like to see another Laid to Rest movie with Crumbs Call. I heard rumors that they were supposed to film it in winter. Uh, I never heard anything. They might be doing it in secret. This movie proved it. Um, I like to see another collector movie. I just like to see a lot of new slasher movies, even to video. Because this movie is basically direct to video, but it looks fantastic. It's acted well. The gore effects are all practical. I forgot to mention they're all practical. No CGI. Cheesy sometimes. I really have a cheesy practical effect than a bad CGI effect. So, but I'm gonna end this review. Um, I really enjoyed Victor Crowley. Like I said, when I first watched it, I wasn't sure of my feelings in the movie, but now I've come to, you know, really appreciate, you know, how much fun it was that it's being, I like it. I really like the two lead characters that, you know, they end up, we had like, already discussed the two lead characters that shouldn't have been our lead characters, but Adam Green wanted to do something, go in, a, go in a different direction. And I really appreciate that. It's just a fun, gory, good time slasher movie. And if you're a fan of the first three movies, you probably already watched this, but if you haven't, Go to Walmart, pick it up. Go to Redbox. I'm not sure if they have it. Pick it up. Um, I'm Jonathan Knight. This has been Big Movie Mass. Thanks for watching.